It's Low Snutty fucking with for show mag, nigga. Come walk a mile with us, motherfucker. Let's get it. Man, we in the hood, man. Taking y'all back to where we at with it. Buck wild over here. But you know it's one of them places where you you from around here, you ain't got too much to worry about type thing. You know this is paradise. Saying? No cap. I don't never see me leaving this motherfucker, to be honest with you. I've been all around like, the world and I still end up right back in this box, no matter what the situation is, for real. Okay. Hey, this shit crazy, because we used to be all full of houses right here. We used to, nigga, we used to have their ass sitting on the corner, running out our grandma's house, running to the corner, making, doing, doing bullshit. Like my grandma don't see us, she's sitting on the porch in her chair watching us run up and down the street, run right back in her house doing all types of bullshit. I remember one time I did some bullshit, snatching nigga glasses and shit, whatever, whatever, whatever. And it was going down over here. There's a bandit house right there, you feel me, next to this house right here. And my granddad on the porch. I'm inside that band of house with the glasses and shit. And niggas pull up like, where the fuck Lose at? Where Lose at? Putting out guns and shit. I'm with my granddad on the porch the whole time, you feel me? The niggas pull off. My man pull up, come get me. I run out the alley, hop in the car, look at my granddad like, he know, he My know. bad, granddad. I fucked up, granddad. I made it hot over here, man. It's shit, cool, where you dog. live at? This is where it started. This is where this shit gonna end. I ain't gonna say it's where it's gonna end because we've, we've been all around the world with it, but this is where it started. And it's, I don't think we would be where we at right now if it wasn't for this raggedy ass motherfucker right here, man. This place right here. This bitch build a lot of character right here, you feel me? This bitch build a she lot of character. man out you, this whole block right here. Like, you either gonna be a nigga that's drunk we, as hell. Yeah, we been saying different type of niggas on this block, too. You, you seen niggas who sit down, the nigga who something happened, you put it on him. And we been saying bosses around here, too. You feel me? It's all about how you wanna, what type of motherfucker you wanna be. This where a nigga like, you know what I'm saying? My, my grandma this on this block. This the safe zone, yeah. My grandma on this block, so I'm like a good child over here. But when I go around the corner, it's a career criminal around the corner, you feel me? Yeah. Growing up in the D, that shit, it is what it is. You take it for what it is. Like, shit cool, it's fun. You don't really notice, like, how people might tell you Detroit is wild or it's hot or it's, they doing this, they doing that. But when you living in the moment or something, you don't really notice that shit. So I feel like growing up in the D, that shit just, it's cool. It's going to be the same as growing up anywhere for anybody. Like, you, you, it's, you, you're not going to tell a motherfucker, like, oh, it's so hard growing up in the D. A motherfucker in Beverly Hills will tell you it's so hard growing up in Beverly Hills. You know, they everybody got their own shit, so I feel like it's all regular, man. That shit live is fun. Make the best out of your situation. I'm a nigga that say my glass been half full instead of half empty, so I feel like growing up in the D was some shit like it was cool for me. It was fun. I ain't never had too much hard shit going on or too much I couldn't have. It was cool. It's easy. Everybody be thinking it's just so bad here and shit, you know what I'm saying? But if you live here, like you from this motherfucker, you won't feel like that. But on the outside looking in, you might think it's just so fucked up. In which it might even be, but once you learn how to adapt to certain shit, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it ain't shit. This is regular life, you feel me? It's life we live. Fun up in Detroit. It's rough as fuck, though. It's a lot of depression, a lot of pain around this motherfucker. I ride through the neighborhood all the time and just look at motherfuckers. Damn, bro. We mad as hell. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can walk through this bitch, see pain on everybody's face around this bitch. But it's, it's, it's money here, too, though. Like, growing up in Detroit was like, you get money too, you know. It's about how you look at this shit. Who, who are you with this shit, you know what I'm saying? What kind of person are you? Detroit ain't for everybody, I tell you that though. I think these houses been gone since like 99 for real. Though. So this cut right here, but even when these houses wasn't gone, we still, because we knew Franny, this was my, my man's damn mama house, so we still was always able to cut through their backyard and, you know what I'm saying, do what the fuck we wanted to do type shit. They got it blocked off now. I ain't been back here in years, dog. The little shit that we doing, you know, it might be big to somebody else, but it's little, it's, it's big to the other world. But the motherfuckers in our hood, man, they looking at us like we don't want Grammys and this shit, BET award. They looking at this shit like, you know, y'all boys bigger than life over here compared to coming from this shit that we come from. You feel me? When we was young, these were the sweetest cars we used to see right here. These raggedy motherfucking cars right here. And they done put this gate up for the cut. They I spent to... a lot of my childhood in this alley right here, bro. That's like hiding my shit here. You feel me? From my grandma, whatever, guns, whatever, dope, whatever. But this is my alley right here, bro. Do this little cut. No cat. Some of y'all might know about this cut. We sorry. This where all the trouble at. This where don't let us. This where we busting sales at. This where your ass get your head busted at. This where all my niggas meet up at. And this is my man's crib too. This was my other one of my best friends. This was his house growing up. You feel me? We still we still tight to this day like a motherfucker. Man, this nigga used to have battles. We hooping backyards and shit. I remember one time me and my nigga Cash was sitting out here. And the hook pulled up on us. I had the pistol on me. They pulled up and stopped on us right here. I had the pistol on me. I flung that bitch under the car, darted off through the next block, 
They seen how fast I run. Them niggas said, I ain't even about to attempt to chase this nigga. And, right, like when you come right here, and you stand right here for all day long, come right here, come here. See them two black cars right there at McDonald's? Nigga, you got an 85% chance of that being catching some dope things right there. Most gonna spend definitely. thousands of dollars with you every day. I grew up in the hustler hood, a dope fiend hustler hood. You know what I'm saying? I used to go to my homeboy shit. Like, my men stayed on Puritan when I was young, and I had homeboy stayed. Every, every, all other hoods. My hood was like the hood where the old school, the old head niggas would hit you off with a set and had your ass rolling. A lot of hoods, they ain't, they ain't know about that. Like, a lot of young niggas, they was on some shit like, they might be robbing or doing this or doing that. In my hood, it was like, shit, you know you can go serve them old ass people some dope right there and make you some money right quick, or you, you feel me? It wasn't, it wasn't so, it wasn't like no. And another thing that was fucked, like that was crazy as hell in my hood scene was like, I feel like growing up watching people, people turn to that shit. You feel me? Like, cause they, they was in your family. You know, you had those type of people in your family and all that shit. But like, when you watch somebody real life turn and some shit like that, you be like, damn, that shit is crazy. Just a lot of shit, man. The hood is just crazy, man. You watch motherfuckers who got, watching motherfuckers who got slick ways and like I done seen a little nigga do something around here. I had trust in this little nigga. They like, yeah, you know the little nigga. He just. He just did woo 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 woo. I'm like, damn, man, he ain't do that shit. I don't see it, bro. I don't think he did it. it ain't even his, it ain't his style. I don't think he did it. I don't think he did it. Man, it turned out that little nigga did it the whole time. So that was one of my life lessons. Like, all right, you always got, you never can't put shit past a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? You never know who who up to what and who doing what. That was something I kind of learned growing up about this hood. Like, motherfucker who you least expect to be the motherfucker that'll do it. You feel me? Well, nerdy to me, like, you know, we blood brothers and shit, same mama, same daddy. We, our relationship, like, you know, like two niggas who been together every day of their life, you feel me? We think the same shit, like, sometimes it be like, this is a true story right here, too. We in the club and shit, and uh, DeMarcus Cousin, the Warriors, they was all in the club and shit. Me, me and Nutty, we had two, two different spots of the club, you feel me? So we both got a bunch of weed on us and shit. DeMarcus Cousin walked by and shit. Nutty gave him the weed. Like, here, take the weed. The Marcus Cousin, like, no, I'm straight. The Marcus Cousin come walk by me. I take the whole zip out my pocket. I don't. Here, bro, take that. He's like, no, I'm straight. Me and Nutty get to the car. We all get to the car. Like, y'all oh, niggas both try to get a nigga some weed, bro. He told y'all niggas the same shit. Like, that's crazy. We be thinking the same shit, you feel me? Los, my little brother, man. We been, we 365. Every day, we did everything together. Hoop, play basketball, share the bag. Shared rap bags, jumped on tour to get man. We did everything together. That's my real little brother, same mama, same daddy. You feel me? Grew up in the same house, did all the same shit. But we still like night and day though at the same time. You feel me? Like his, his, his personality completely different from my personality. But I feel like that's why we always, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's why our shit always work. You feel me? But we still always, we know, we know. Me and him both got that common kind of sense. Like, all right, nigga. We know not to be like that, you feel me, no matter what. Whether I tell him or he tell me, like, all right, we know for sure we ain't finna be like that, nigga, or we ain't finna be like them. This shit about paper and taking care of our people. But that's my, that's my little brother, though. That's my little nigga. We do everything. We 50-50 with this shit. No cap. Shout out my nigga Skeddy from the White House, man. My nigga Skeddy been plugging me with shit, man. He lied to me and told me he owned this house and shit, right? He's like, let's go fix up my house. I own this house. You, you can trap out the house. I'm like, let's go trap out the house. I'm about to fix it up. I fix the house up and shit. You tell them everything. Years huh? go yeah, by. Retired. Years go by and shit. I found a nigga never owned the fucking house, man. We on the porch shooting dice one day. And uh, I had like three, four dope things come up back to back. I'm serving. I never felt so proud of my life. Like, you know what? I ain't got to do shit, bro. I work, nigga. I got a job, nigga. Oh, for real. I'm serving. I got clientele. They want the shit. What do I know? <laughs> What's up with y'all? You all right, bro? All right. I just had a hard-ass car show. Though. They had, we had this whole shit elbow to elbow. Though. We had it last year. We tried to do it again this year. We got out here early as hell in the morning. Nigga, the police was on every block. Had every block shut down. Like, y'all ain't doing shit around here. Hating on us. Hey, I'm going to stop playing around like I'm being... Man, we this shit over here, all this shit is our shit, man. I'm letting nobody ever tell you different, man. From the, give a fuck from Oakland to the Boulevard. You can't speak on Linwood without mentioning us too. And you ain't gonna hear about no live shit going on around here unless it's us too. And this bitch wasn't on the map till they came to us too. You feel me? It was a dead zone. 
feel me? And been in all type of situations and you still gonna hear all good and shit. And make it out of the situations, you feel me? Popping with you. I wanna smoke that weed, dog. Man. Cold as fuck. Oh. All right, cook. You know, you know I'm a fly nigga, bro. Just come on, bro. You know I'm a fly nigga. <laughs> Dirtiest story yeah, in Detroit, Street, bro. Story. Don't even, niggas don't even know. This bitch like 1996 in this bitch, bro. They ain't. It been the same since 96, bro. I'm about to look. He already gave me diapers. Don't even have a package to the diapers, bro. They pack them with themselves, bro. What the fuck, Art? Right. Fix the store, bro. Put cardboard under that shit. Yeah. This is like third one. Hey, this is right what here. they selling in this bitch, bro? Yeah. yeah. Come on, now. This one is hectic for you. You need to get done. They, they trying to dime this stuff. My baby got everything, man. He got a, he got a, he got a shopping center and all type of shit. This a badass hoodie right here. They make a joke. Man, what? Buy a sleeve. No box on this bitch. Buy a sleeve. You damn it, buy a sleeve. You can buy a sleeve. Let me get four out there. You can buy a sleeve. He said you can buy four out of there. Hey, no. I tell this nigga every day. You gotta change the store, bro. Like. This shit, this shit so outdated, bro. <laughs> this is crazy right here, though. What are these? I need this. What brand are these? Same as eat out this bitch every day all day. They eating out this bitch. They eating out this bitch every day all day, Joe. No cap. They selling something. But nigga, one thing a nigga never did, none of us, never we never st stole shit from this never store, bro. So y'all should be thankful we never stole from this store, bro. I ain't never stole Cause I, this. Cause I, what? <laughs> I get hungry in this bitch. The no Limit sound influence my music come from like being a kid. And like I was always infatuated with like that shit, like Cash Money, Hot Boys, Master P, all that. Just like the whole New Orleans sound, like that shit was always like, as a kid, I knew all them fucking songs like by heart. Six year old, I knew how the fuck I know a super shocker verse by word for word six years old. I don't know, that shit is like. But I'm really off those kind of beats now. So if any producers watching this shit, y'all keep sending me them kind of beats. They're getting looked over, man. I ain't, you know, send me new shit, man. But I appreciate it, though. The catchphrase, pussy ass niggas ain't got no love for them. Man, that came from a song. I did with my, my nigga Brooks. We in the studio gambling and shit. And uh, he was doing the song. And uh, how I do music is like, I was trying to like put a separation between the verses and shit. So he rapped, whoop, I took a little break on the song, like a little bridge, and I just said it one time. Pussy ass niggas ain't got no love for him. Bitch, I'm fed up, huh? Get your bread up. It was just like, from that day it stuck. I went to, I went to do a show and shit with Brooks one time. And like, uh, he had a show to do. We did. We did. Uh, we performed the song that we had. When I said it, the whole club said it. I'm like, that. and that shit just stuck with me for, since then. I've been. It's like my tag for every song since that day. But it came from that verse, though. You would think it was some shit I've said my whole life, though. You feel me? But it just came from that song, though, and it stuck with me. Though. Rap came about me just fucking around in the studio on some shit like. My man Skeddy, same nigga, man. That nigga, this shit crazy. All this shit. I guess why I say shout out my nigga Skeddy, but. This shit came from my man's bought a studio. He ain't even know how to work the shit. He just bought all the equipment. He ain't know nothing. We had to get on YouTube and had to have one of us come over there and just show us how to press record and drag the shit. So I was the nigga that sat right there and watched him record and press and drag and all this shit and all that shit. So when it was time to all right, like we open, or not even open, my man's partner was rapping. So when it was time for him to rap, he like shit. He don't know how to record himself either. I ended up just recording him and recording Babyface, recording to the point where I'm like, Ain't nobody in that bitch. I'm editing nigga's song, doing the best edit I can. I'm like, I'm about to rap too. Shit, me and my niggas in there chilling. I'm about to say some shit. I'm about to go in there and say some shit too. I ended up saying some shit one time, like just bullshitting around. I was freestyling. A couple of my niggas still got that song, and them niggas was, them niggas was like, man, that shit hard as fuck. I, I literally freestyled the whole song from the beginning to the end, just bullshitting around. Then that shit turned to me being a, that shit turned to me, ended up making a song. Niggas like, oh, you and Los gotta shoot that one song y'all got. I'm like, damn, we ain't about to shoot no videos. Man, we just was, you feel me? We just was doing this shit, bullshitting around. So that shit turned to, all right, let's shoot a video. Now we shooting a video. I'm still, we still, we don't even know how to shoot a video. The camera in our face, we just rapping our song. So now this shit go from, I end up catching a petty case out of town and shit. I go to jail when the song, the song come out while I'm sitting in the county jail. So shit, I'm sitting in the jail. 
man, I'm calling home. I was like, bro, they fuck with this song. They fuck with this song. Bro, I'm rapping. For, we rap. We rappers for real now. We rappers for real now. I'm like, man, bitch, shut up. We ain't rap. So now he letting me hear some of the songs he making. I'm like, damn, this nigga sound hard as fuck on this bitch. Like this nigga saying shit. I can't believe how he's putting that shit together. You feel me? And his whole beat selection and everything was like, we been had just going to the studio, just fucking around, like just playing with that shit. But the shit the nigga was saying on the new ones, like he had made a song called uh, White T-Shirt Story. No, looking at it. Who the hell? Man, that shit, I was in jail, dog. That shit had me down there coming to tears. So then by the time I got out of jail, my nigga had, looking at it, he had a video shot for that, and he had the, our first video. Man, I came home, everybody knew all that shit. Man, they was knowing songs that was, I had in the computer. They had been bouncing them songs out and putting them bitches in niggas' phones. And niggas, the niggas all around had knew the songs and shit. I'm like, man, fuck it. So that shit started for me. Like, all right, I'm, I'm in this bitch rapping now every day, too. I still was just, like, recording bullshit around. But I'm like, nah, I'm rapping to the point where, nah, I'm like, nigga, I ain't recording nobody. Nigga, you feel me? I'm, I'm rapping. I'm about to do this shit my whole life. You better learn how to record yourself. Nah, I'm my shit popping. I'm doing all the nah. I'm doing uh, I'm doing all the ripping and running. And this shit, I look up. I'm making feature money, all type of shit. I'm doing shows. I'm like, what the fuck, man? We ain't never. You feel me? We doing strip club little shows. We going out of town doing shows. Then it got to the point where like, all right, this life, nigga, you better wake up. You see what the fuck going on? And got to the point like, all right, now we full fledged rapper now. Nothing else matters. We rapper now. We on the what's 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 now? You feel me? Right now we on motherfucking Ford and LaSalle. At the Ford LaSalle Park, man, you know. It's like the other side of our hood. We got we got people on this side, people on that side. This was like my cousin. This was like my cousin area where he, you know what I'm saying? We used to come around here and fuck with him. You come walk down here and, you know, bullshit around. This shit on this side is like night and day compared to our side. Like this it. like the east side of our hood right here. Okay. These niggas, these this this a different area. You feel me? But it's like big part of our life of who I am and shit. This whole strip right here, dog. This whole strip is like a. This bitch is like a rolling strip. Oh, these are, it's just, it's be like Bell Isle right here. This like, little shit was like, like look Belle at this Isle, shit. This bro. is like a regular residential street, but it's, it's apartments everywhere. Like all these is motherfucking raggedy ass bed bug apartments. And we shit. used to have control of this whole fucking building right here, like for like five years. That bitch, the whole fucking. The landlord walked out on that motherfucker, and the doors was open. My cousin was charged. Was, he was acting like he was the landlord in that bitch to certain people, <laughs> like still getting the rent money from their ass. This the drug zone right here, boy. This like the. This the real drugs on like this. This, this the this the cheap drugs on. This where you get. This where yeah. you can buy crack at. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. On yeah. Our side of the hood. That's where you can get heroin and shit. And over here, you can get something for four dollars over here. You feel me? No cap. And I ain't into that. I was never into no cheap shit. You feel me? This the ecstasy court. If it's been plenty of time, I done popped beans, ecstasy and shit. Came up here and blanked out like, damn, <laughs> bro, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Ecstasy side of Linwood right here, man. I might start popping ecstasy again for the fuck of it. You feel me? See how I feel to be rich as hell off of ecstasy and shit. I was broke as hell popping ecstasy. Let's see how I feel to be rich off of ecstasy. Man, let me get a shot, One more time. Bro. One more time. About the airball on, twice, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Don't get this nigga the ball that told you. <laughs> My jacket tight. I'm right on point, though. <laughs> let me see one more time, bro. One more time. I'm right on point with that bitch. You see where the ball going? Right up under the rim. There you go. Damn! One more time, bro. I'm about to go, bro. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> Do a move. Hit it with the move, Lost. Let's go. One more time for your guy. I need one. I feel and so bad. It's the ball y'all niggas got. Ha! Ha! Give my change. I don't miss for long. That's all. One more time before I leave, bro. There it is. Who about to pull up on Bop? There you go. Hey, Joe. Joe, damn. Oh, two, three. Huh? Muscle memory. <laughs> Come on, muscle memory. That's what it's called. First off, it was Los was pushing this shit. Pussy ass nigga ain't got no love for him. They was pushing that shit like, pussy ass nigga ain't got. You know what I'm saying? That was like our, our whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So one day, my, my man CP, shout out CP, he, uh, he wrote me on Instagram. He had put up a post on He ain't write me. He put up a post on Instagram and had the acronym like P A N A. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck that mean? He like, bitch, you owe me for life. I'm like, damn, I ain't even know. It was the same thing we had been, our shit we had been screaming, so we had ended up putting it on some shirts. Man, we put that shit on some shirts, that shit went, the whole hood was buying, and it got to the point where motherfuckers out of town, like I said, everything was new still, so motherfuckers out of town on Instagram, like, send me a shirt, send me a shirt to the point, we at the FedEx every day sending off shirts, so I'm like, all right. Babyface Ray played it for sure. He was rolling our whole brand because 
I never even, like, I was, like I said, when we first started rapping, I was just making songs, putting them in my phone and shit. One day, Face called us, like, yeah, what up, y'all need to pull up. We finna shoot a video. I'm like, shoot, I think he finna shoot one of his videos. I get there, my song playing, like, you feel me? The song, our song, Kill. The very first video we ever shot, you feel me? First song I put out to the world was Kill. We paid for that shit. Like, we paid out his pocket for the video. Like, yeah, y'all niggas, I got it, don't worry about it. And it was just like, you know. And just seeing how a nigga move and shit, like seeing a nigga make money in, in the area where I make money at, like damn. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out how can I transition my life to this kind of money, to some clean, legit money. I'm like, man, I can't. And I see this nigga having niggas walking in, spending 10000 on the verse and shit. I'm like, all right. I ain't, that ain't too far in my arms reach. I can, go, I can go grab that too, you feel me? Especially with the help of a nigga like, you know, a, a genuine person like my nigga face, you know what I'm saying? It was never like, no uh, nigga trying to hold a nigga back type shit like nigga want to see a nigga do good. Babyface Ray like a motherfucker. That's my people though. I'm gonna tell you that right now. He did. He did. That nigga done did a lot of shit. I don't even really want to speak on for us because I, we still shit still in the works. But like man, I'm just gonna say that nigga. That nigga one of the rules. You don't get a lot of Babyface Rays, bro. And that shit ain't even just off music. Like that's that's my guy. I'm like, well, I call him right now. He on deck. The nigga on top of everything. He made in America, rolling loud. He on tour. Nigga, as soon as he went on tour. I feel like me and Lowe's are the first people he called, like, man, what up, man? I need y'all boys. We going on tour. Let's, let's kick this shit. Let's go crazy. And the nigga, she paid for our first video to get shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was a nigga who, he was a nigga who really kind of believed in us and his rap shit before. We was like, we was taking it serious. I mean, I ain't gonna say he was even taking it serious. He just, he just knew we had that shit. Like, man, y'all gotta do this. Y'all gotta take this shit serious. But y'all niggas got this shit. Y'all niggas the ones. Y'all niggas out. Right. So I'm like, we like, fuck it, man. We going, we going off this nigga word. So. That nigga did a lot of shit for us, bro. I done been in, to them round tables, them big meetings with them folks because of that nigga, man. He done brought me to them, you know what I'm saying? So that's the nigga who just like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta forever give him his, his flowers, bro. Because he, he, if it wasn't for face and my nigga Skeddy, bro, I don't even be, we wouldn't even be talking right now. You feel me? I be talking about dope, bro. You know, these niggas, I was talking about dope in the world and niggas talking about dance moves and, or a nigga talking about shoot him up, bang, bang. I was still pushing dope, still pushing dope. And niggas was, like, at one point, they wanted to dance real bad. At one point, they wanted to shoot real bad. Nobody really was thinking about hustling, so I didn't seem to... But I stayed, like, all right. And my nigga still was like, all right, nigga, we gonna, we gonna do this shit together. I don't give a fuck. No matter what's going on, we still thugging. So I, shot, I forever got respect for my boy, man. That nigga locked in. That's my people. That's my people. We got to report to the same table at the end of the week. You see this shit right here? We used to stay, we used to, we used to stay in this house down here, our first little spot together. Nigga, I'm walking, up, I'm walking up this street right here. Some cars coming right here. These motherfuckers almost hit each other and shit. Some young niggas in the car that, that almost got hit. This nigga pops out the back seat and get the strike in the car down, shooting that bitch down. Look over at my dumb ass. I'm just walking. That nigga looked out of, out of me. I looked at that nigga like, man, don't make me pee party. I ain't <laughs> see shit. I remember this nigga had a, he had a dope thing bring us his bridge card and shit. He was supposed to only get like 100 off the motherfucker. He had like $700 on it and shit. We go around the corner to the store. Go we'll spend a whole 700 on this nigga bridge car. All snacks and shit. And we gave a nigga fake dope. We ain't had no dope. We gave a nigga some <laughs> fake dope in the pack. We wanted $100 worth of shit. You know what I'm saying? He like, all I got is a bridge car with 700, 700 on it. Man, can you give me $100 worth we of shit? We in the store grabbing anything. Fuck him. I never seen a nigga spend 700 in the liquor store so fast. <laughs> 700 in the liquor store, like on chips and shit and juices and shit. Imagine that. For a house full of bullshit. With the, with the music, I, how, how can we not rap about this shit? You feel me? How, this shit is our life. We had so many funny ass and just, not even just funny shit. We had scares, we had laughs, we had bankrolls, we had our being broke with this shit. This shit is life, you feel me? Ran it up, whatever you wanted to see. This is my nigga Bob, he been thugging with us since, since way back in the 90s type shit. This shit go back far. Now we paying our mama bills. You feel me? That shit, that shit crazy how the shit is now. Compared to, we got more fields than anything now. Back then, they would've left the vacant houses up for a nigga been able to go through. Right. Type shit. You know, a nigga, a, a nigga been a bust one of these bitches open. That shit be over with now. They just took everything. They ain't even wasting their time with it. Some of these bitches been vacant about 20, 20 years. years. I remember so we was young, they used, to, they used to have a, a block parties around the corner. I'm talking about, that bitch would be. Harris used to have a block party on this block every year. Man, this, this the area where they used to bring the big ass garbage truck 
full of water for the kids to jump in and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? I remember that type of shit as a kid growing the mobile up. Pool, the mobile pool. Mobile pool. They don't have that shit no more. Smiley the Clown and shit. Unless we do it. We no cap. Do we the ones. No okay. cap. But you know. Two family flat area. Ain't too many spots got two family flat. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. We, are, we two family flat babies. Niggas don't, be know, what the, niggas don't know what that is. That's, 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 one, that's one house. Two families. They don't know, have a clue who the people downstairs is. You don't have a clue who upstairs is. Jigga. Jigga. <laughs> Jigga, man. You know what's going on, man. Our biggest song, the No Love For Him remix, too. That shit was like. That was like No Love For Him. That shit came out. That shit was like a motherfucking neighborhood anthem and all. That shit was like. Instantly hit the streets. I don't give a fuck no matter where we went. They was, they was re saying our bars, too. I was probably pumping gas or something. Motherfucker be like. Bitch, we your friend now. I'm like, man, this, they love this shit. So then once it started, it, 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 I don't say it died down, but it was so hyped up. And motherfuckers was like, and then we had people like Rio and Mike. Then was our people, at the, like, they're still our people. But at that time, we was all rocking, like, on some point, like, they'd be in the studio, we'd be in the studio. They, we, you know, we was, that was, that's our people. Then me and All Star had a relationship. Everybody that was on there, facing GT, them our, them our people. That shit just was like, it was just, everything was a, to make it a remix then, you know, it was like, that was the perfect people. I ain't even had no say so who was on the remix, but once I once I heard like, all right, this is what we doing with this bitch, I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. It's all our people, but that shit was fire though, dog. That shit was hard. That was a real moment for me right there. That was a real moment. Motherfuckers love that song. Everywhere I go around the world, they speak on that song. That shit was like a that was like a hood classic too. Like the way I started rapping and shit was like, you know, of course you know we got the White House Studio and shit. Everybody pretty much know about that. But it comes from me like sitting there. You know what I'm saying? I was going through some shit actually when I first started rapping. I was going through a motherfucking case. I was fighting this case and shit. And then she had me like stressed out, not knowing what I'm finna do next in life. Cause I was like, my mind was so set on, you know, doing this type of thing, you know what I'm saying? Which I can't do no more because it's other circumstances I can't speak of, but I can't I can't move how I used to move. So it's like I'm just sitting back for like five hundred days just thinking like, damn, what the fuck I'm finna be doing now, dog? Boom. I'm going to the studio every day, rapping and shit. I rapped probably like two months before I took it serious. Like I was just bullshit making songs, having them in my phone and shit. But then I put the tape out. Labels got to calling me and shit like, yeah, we going, ooh, ooh, I'm like, what? Right, it's on the floor then, right? that's what I do. When I first made some money off of it though, you feel me? Like on some, really made some, a couple thousand I can do some shit with, take care of my, pay some bills off with. It was like, all right, I'm about to go full fledged with this shit. Cause you know what I'm saying? One thousand is gonna turn to a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand gonna turn to a million, so on and so on. And that's the track I'm on right now, you feel me? We got a lot more than I had when I first started this shit. Right now we at the motherfucking White House, man. Where a nigga's second life started on some whole different life, you feel me? Music. Yeah. Out this bitch right here. This shit so legendary to me, this shit down there like a family member, like the actual house itself, like. This thing, this thing is like Especially man, him, me and him painted and built this house and put drywall up and put the stuff, all type of shit on some. Ain't no what the fuck. You feel my man bought the house, asked us to help him out with some shit. Same, same one from uh, Clemens. Nigga, and that shit. Scaredy called me. House. Got to fix this bitch. What? Come on. And that shit got bigger than ever, bro. A lot of motherfuckers want to know what go on inside the White House and what's so special about the White House and how do motherfuckers come here and, and do good in music and shit. It's the environment, man. It's like. You'll walk in some shit and you'll see six, seven, eight, nine, ten artists and we all like working on shit, you feel me? Whether it's some group shit or whether it's some individual shit that you can niggas is in there working. So it's a work environment. You come around a work environment, iron shop and iron, you're gonna get better, you feel me? Nigga just practicing doing some shit, you feel me? That shit getting deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you find yourself in some shit, but as far as like the environment and how the shit go. And that shit just started from like a, anything. Linking up, I mean, first off, artists like V's, that's really our people. Our shit come from our, my daddy, his daddy was cool, so that shit ain't had nothing to do with music. Both of us, we all, I feel like we all ran into some music shit. And uh, Babyface Ray, that wasn't no music shit. He was like, his brother tied in with me. His brother from our neighborhood, so shit. Everything was like a just, it wasn't nothing on no music shit. That shit just ended up falling into being music, you know what I'm saying? And then all the extra shit that came with it, like that was just, cause Face had a music career, so niggas would come through and then they might just come before and plus it was a studio. And I was an engineer, Los would be engineer. We just be fucking around in there. So that shit just came like that. This shit kind of started for me from shooting dice. No cap, shit like that. Like, 
crazy ass dice. Yeah, I just I'll never forget how I got a PC first. You feel me? We shooting dice and shit. Six, seven in the morning. Nobody ain't there. Just me and him left. We cleaning up and shit. I'm playing some shit. He's like, damn, play that shit again. I'm about to hop on that bitch. I'm like, what? Come on, it's on. This man. Most niggas that pay pay for that shit type of shit, you feel me? Yeah. What's up, huh? This ain't no bullshit playhouse either, like all that. Playing around, studio working on shit. Not playing around because I'm not gonna say everybody shit is playing around, but just this is a serious place right here. Yeah, right? yeah, we, we can't, ain't no, ain't no just going in there playing on the booth. At this one, we, we need, we beat now, so you ain't in there doing some serious shit, nigga down there like, no man, you gotta get out the way, bro. Let somebody it's else. It's just like it. a record label for real. Yeah, no cap. So you gotta think with well, the real business, now you got motherfuckers that's trying to get in here because they might be on some, they trying to get their shit power, so they trying to get in here and it be, you know, just be, it just be genuine people that always type shit in here. You always, all the other shit always weed itself out. That's why you, it's so many motherfuckers that been in here that the world never heard of or his shit never got, you know what I'm saying? Just because that shit don't work like that. Ah, uh, Daisy Lane is everything, man. Daisy Lane. That shit, um, that shit, that shit, I mean, McDonald's is Daisy Lane. They get motherfucking, anywhere you go is a Daisy Lane. You hustling somewhere and you getting some money out that shit and you making the most out of it, that's Daisy Lane, bro. No cap. Like, everybody keep asking me, where is Daisy Lane? Where is Daisy Lane? They get you, get you a Daisy Lane is what I want to tell niggas who keep asking me. Everybody say, where is Daisy Lane? It's hot as fuck, the real Daisy Lane. You niggas don't want to go there. You niggas wouldn't even be able to survive at the real Daisy Lane. So just go get you a Daisy Lane and get the most out that bitch. That bitch is like a, it's like a, it's a situation. That's what Daisy Lane is, it's a situation. It's a trap spot, it's a job, it's a motherfucking, the gas station you roll at, it's the van you roll out of, whatever you do to make you some money. If you go to work every day, it's Chrysler. That's Daisy Lane. Everything is Daisy Lane as long as you're making the most out your situation. If you know you can pick up some overtime at work, do that shit to get you some more money instead of going home and just sit down doing nothing. And you feel me? If you at the gas station and you know you just sitting there for no reason, boy, go find you something else. Like that ain't, you know, or do whatever to make this shit. Get the most out your situation, bro. Don't waste your time. So I feel like whatever somebody got a situation going on, and if, your, if it's your daisy, get the most out of it. That's what we, that's what we stand on, getting the most out of something, bro. For real. And taking that shit home. Daisy Lane is just like, I'm gonna tell you what it means now, what Daisy Lane is like currently. Daisy Lane is like a state of somewhere you make money at. See, like right now, we in, you in Daisy Lane, you feel me? It's a clothing store, Daisy Lane. Daisy Lane can be the motherfucking bank you work at, McDonald's you work at. It's just like a phrase now of somewhere where you get money at, you feel me? From the block to the White House to our shit, Daisy Lane Records. And we, and we right around the corner, too. Uh, put this on. Let's see how you looking at. Huh? That on right there, man. We right around the corner too, like literally. That same alley we was just in. This the next come block. Next alley over. You can come up in here. You feel me? This our this our this our studio too now. This where we record at. Hold on. Hold on. Our shit. We keep we this booth right here was straight up stolen from Joseph McFadden. Yeah, this booth right here. No cap. No cap. This, you know what I'm saying? It's like make my, right make my shit like for show man. Daisy Lane Records. It's time to sign some of these niggas. I used to have testers. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Shout out to old girl who made this. Right now. No, you know how you like uh, show my other one. Why how you how you market the, how you one. market apparel? Got my that's, that's how you market some apparel right there, though. Damn, you, got, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I, you know you wake up in the morning and make 500. I got a lot of shit going on right here, dog. This Mafia. Shit, what the hell you got going on? I got a lot of shit going on, bro. Shout out to, shout out to my nigga Skeddy. Shout out to my nigga. Shout out to everybody, dog. What's the opening day? Hey, hey, I'm looking at my the opening day, October 15th. So October I'm standing 15th, on that. The opening day. I'm looking at this shit like yeah. a. I'm looking like this shit, like I'm the boss of this shit from here on out, Joe, you feel me? So anybody trying to get your shit together, come holler at me, bro. I can point you in the right direction, just have your paper right. I'm coming here looking for no handout. We're going to make this shit work, man. For sure, man. Exclusive. Exclusive. Exclusive.